Hi, I'm Jim Mann with Hoban Style Southern Cooking. Welcome back. I've had several of y'all ask me, have I moved? And let me explain real quick. I have a tiny house that I have been staying at during COVID. It was sort of my retreat. It's a one room house and it has everything in one room. I sleep in a hammock there, but that's where I have all my animals and chickens and fruit trees and everything. Uh, now that I've, COVID has let up a little bit, I've moved back to my principal house in the city and this is my principal house. So this is where I'll be doing some video, most of the videos, but I will go back to my tiny house because that is my retreat. I call it the coop. This is the house of the hummingbirds. Okay. I'm going to do something tonight that a lot of y'all have probably never even heard of, but it's a very, very Southern dish. It's called tomato gravy. Okay. I've earlier, I fried up some bacon, uh, and see how pretty and flat that bacon is? If you cut your bacon in half when you fry it, it won't crinkle all up on you. It'll lay flat on you. So, And it's still one, one piece of bacon. There are like six pieces of bacon there. Well, this is the grease that was left over from the bacon, and the grease is hot. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a little bit of flour and sprinkle around a little bit on, on here. I'll turn my heat up a little bit. And what I'm trying to do is I'm just going to try to brown this uh, flour a little bit. It's kind of like making a roux, but I am just browning it right now. I'm going to add a little bit more. And you have to keep on stirring it. You don't want it, you want it just to turn a light tan. You don't want it to turn, you don't want it to burn on you. And when it starts thickening up, you want to start adding a little bit of water to it at a time. You can see it starts bubbling up already. I like to do it this way because it gives a chance for the flour to cook a little bit in the bacon gravy. Now I could make a roux up with the water uh, and just pour it in the bacon gravy, but I think it tastes better if it has a time to to cook a little bit. And keep on adding a little bit of water, a little water. This recipe um, is a very, very southern recipe, like I told you, and my grandmother used to make it mostly on the mo for morning dishes, um, but she would do it at nighttime too, because a lot of time we would have uh, nighttime dishes. We would have eggs, like some of y'all do at nighttime, or this would be good on grits, or also it was just a good side dish. So, so what I'm doing is I'm just stirring this until I get this good, and stir it up here, I'll make sure there are no lumps in it. And no gravy in it. Pour a little bit more milk. I mean, a little bit more water. I'm sorry. Okay. That looks pretty good. Now what I'm going to do is what we would do in, in the summertime, we would go out and get fresh tomatoes. And we would come in and we'd chop them all up. Chop them up and chop them up. And then we would put those into the pan. But since I don't have fresh tomatoes here, I've got a can of diced, petite diced tomatoes. So that's what I'm going to use. And I'm going to use the sauce and all. Now this petite uh, tomatoes has garlic in it. Um, I got that because I thought it would give it a little extra flavor. So I'm going to put that around here. And we're going to stir this all around. I know you said tomato gravy and, and bacon. Oh, Th but this is, you know, it's, it's called Homestyle Southern Cooking. And this has been so great for me because it's brought back so many memories and things of what my, my grandparents and my mom did when I was growing up that I had forgotten about. Um, another one I want to bring you really soon is a buttermilk pie. If you've never had a slice of buttermilk pie, you're really missing out. So I'm going to turn this up just a little bit more and get this, get this bubbling a little bit. Earlier I made some biscuits. As you can see, if not, I wouldn't be able to touch this pan, okay? So I made some, some biscuits up and I'm going to go over here and I'm going to get a plate. I'm going to take my plate and set it right here. And we'll get a knife. 
And I think I'm going to take two of the biscuits. I'm going to cut these biscuits open. Now, let me give you another little hint. These biscuits are cold. If you wanted to heat these biscuits up, a lot of people put them in the microwave. Don't put your biscuits in the microwave. When you put your biscuits in the microwave, it makes them really, really tough. Take your biscuits, put them back in your oven like for five minutes, or if you have a toast oven, put them in your toast oven just long enough to warm them up and they'll be just like they're brand new, okay? All right, I'm gonna let this it's, it's just simmer just a few minutes. I'm going to let this simmer about three minutes, then I'll be right back and we're going to try the tomato gravy. Okay, this is bubbling a little bit, but one thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get my sugar. Anytime I make tomato sauce or anything with tomatoes in it, I like to put just a little bit of sugar in it because that cuts the acid taste. So um, we'll put that in there. Continue to stir this a little bit. Okay, and we're gonna try this. Now, you have two options. Some people like to take their bacon and put it on, on their biscuits. And some people like it beside, uh, on, the, on their plate. I'm gonna put mine on my biscuit. Then I'm gonna take my tomato gravy. And remember, this is a base, is a, toba uh, is a bacon base, so. Okay, there is my tomato gravy. Tomato gravy, like I told you, is a really southern, southern dish. Um, I don't know where it originated, but like I said, if you have fresh tomatoes in the summer, it's a great time to fix them. Um, but let's try it. I love it. You either love tomato gravy or you don't like tomato gravy because people are just not used to having gravy and tomatoes in it. But this is really, really good. And I'm glad you could join me tonight to see this. Until next time, this is Jim Mann in Merida. Please find me on Facebook and, and like me and also subscribe to YouTube. I'm so glad you could come into my new kitchen and that you let me come into your home as you always do. Until next time, stay safe. It's still a very unsafe world out there. And know that I think about each one of y'all. Each one of you feel like family to me. Take care of yourself and God bless.